My name's Guy Kesteven, and I've been testing mountain bikes and kit for nearly 25 years. And today, this is the tech talk around on Pivot's Switchblade Team XDR. This is the Team XDR version, so as you'd expect, uh, XDR brakes and XDR drive chain. And, but because this is the Team version, there is an XTR XT version, which gets a standard chain set. This gets a race face next R crank, so a sub 500 gram crank, but still with the tougher axle and uh, pedal inserts uh, from the 6C uh, free ride crank. So really nice combination, again, of just a really light piece that still drives really, really hard. And I've even upgraded it with these uh, wolf tooth components. So in terms of drive chain, really, really top level. In terms of brakes, I'm not so sure. Uh, suffered some bite point issues all the way through from testing. They're right for the first couple of rides and then, you know, random bite point. It's been a long time uh, kind of issue with Shimano brakes. And unfortunately these XTRs didn't escape it. And also on the rear, brake pad rattle was really, really distracting. So it's interesting to see a lot of top enduro riders uh, who ride pivots and other bikes like Da Vinci actually uh, use the unfinned pads or cut the pads off, cut, cut the fins off the pads to reduce the rattle and noise on there because they find it distracting. But anyway, this comes in a whole bunch of different specifications. You don't have to go for XTR. Uh, starts at 5,700 pounds, but goes all the way up to uh, 12.4 if you want the full uh, Joey Exotic uh, SRAM Axis wireless setup. What you do get is Fox uh, top of the range factory kit. So it's a uh, factory 36 fork on the front with 160 mm travel. And then at the back, you've got a super custom tuned DPX2 for uh, Fox float shock. Uh, it's not as exclusive as it was because a lot of the work they did with the base plate and the uh, revalving of the shock uh, features on the new uh, 2021 DPX2s. But frankly, that can only be a good thing because this is the smoothest DPX2 I have ever ridden by a long shout. Uh, trunnion mount at the front, so you've got the bearings through there for ultra sensitivity. And then you've even got a little nice little sag marker on there. Uh, to record that travel. As you can see, uses, you know, it's pretty keen to use most of its travel and then often stop short of giving you full stroke. And uh, that's something you have to work around with a volume spacer uh, when you get, well, certainly I did when I got the bike, uh, ended up dropping out the original quite large uh, 0.6 inch uh, volume spacer for something smaller, uh, just to get a slightly less progressive stroke and get full travel out of it. But apart from that, you've got these super short lower linkage there for this DW link system and then this amazing sort of one piece machined CNC alloy knuckle at the top. So super, super tight uh, from a linkage point of view and then these oversized bearings all the way through. At the top corner here, you've got this little uh, eccentric piece. So that means you can shift the geometry uh, by half a degree uh, in terms of seat angle goes from 75 to 75.5 to 76 and head angle goes from 66 to 66.5 and it also raises this relatively high bottom bracket uh, so it starts off at uh, 447 but it goes up to 452 uh, when you lift it into the high position but with the way that shock sinks into its travel so easily, uh, that's not a problem dynamically on the trail. Uh, reach again, quite a balanced reach. It's 470 or 475 on this large, depending on uh, where you put the uh, where you put that flip chip, and then super short rear end. So 432 mil rear end. They really get that back wheel in close with that short linkage, and but it's still got decent tire clearance in there, as you can see. And also because they keep the seat tube short, if you want a longer reach bike, it's easy to size up. So yeah, I could go to an extra large, or if you're on a medium, you could go to a large and get the reach that way. But as you'll see from the live ride video, it just produces a really well balanced ride. Uh, frame itself is made from what Pivot called their hollow core carbon system, so really you know a high pressure system that uh formed over a solid center that really lets them sort of squeeze maximum resin out of it so you're just getting pure high grade carbon fiber uh which keeps the frame super stiff and again just gives it a great dynamic feel the feel of this bike is a real strong point of it you're getting uh in terms of detailing because this is you know this is a super pricey bike so in terms of detailing you're getting these uh little smart port cable ports here uh you can swap them obviously if you're running a wireless system but they just stop the cables from rattling around inside. And also the other thing they've done to cut down rattle and uh, chatter from stones or just things flying up, you've got a little rubber sort of skirt across the top of the linkage there to stop anything dropping down between mainframe and swing arm. You've got this really neat 
little elevated chainstay guard there to stop the chain banging off there and it's a full wrap around rubber guard there and as you can see it's not just stuck on the outside there's a little shelf actually molded into the carbon fiber so a really neat you know there's just neat detail all the way through this not everyone's going to like the fact if you see there it's got a uh, press fit bottom bracket but to be fair recent press fit bottom bracket bikes i've had i've not had a serious issue with them in terms of reliability they've run absolutely fine i've beasted a norco all through winter and it's been absolutely spot on so you know maybe that isn't the headache it used to be certainly for uk riders in terms of frame weight uh pivot claim 2.6 for a small frame without a shock which would equate to around three kilos with a shock for a medium which is the weights i normally go off uh but actual complete bike weight 13.67 for this bike suggests frame weight might actually be a little heavier in, in reality as well as the fox suspension you've got a fox kashima coated factory uh, transfer dropper post so, and it comes in 175 mil stroke on this so plenty of clearance again because you've got that short seat tube there so when the seat goes down it's a proper drop so you can really get your groove on uh, this is the second generation of a pivot switchblade it's named after an original titus bike and switchblade officially comes from the fact that you can switch these 29 wheels out for 27.5 by 2.8 tires as well so a lot of that comes from the fact it's got this super boost rear end pivot introduced it on the original switchblade and it's 157 mil rear axle so a lot wider than the standard 148 mil boost which does create a bit of a problem with uh, getting spare hubs in a hurry wheel choices if you're buying a lower grade one but with that industry nine hydro hub in there as standard that's not something you're going to want to upgrade that you know instant engagement uh proper top spec hub i mean not everyone might like the buzz of it but the buzz you get from the instant acceleration is certainly addictive when you're riding this bike and it's laced into uh reynolds black label uh, enduro rims so 28 mil internal diameter rim uh light tough uh super tight riding feel so again really really suits the bike and in terms of tires you've got a classic minion dhr rear and dhf front uh combo in a 29 by 2.4 at the rear and 29 by 2.5 at the front so you've got all that kind of wide tire footprint and control but in a really precise uh light and agile wheel set and to be honest that just sums up this bike superbly and then just coming up above so we can look at better look at the controls you've got these uh, pivot lock on grips pivot's own uh, carbon bar and a pivot stem uh, again not you know obviously not brand name stuff it's just the pivot logo on there but really really superb quality to be fair really nice ride feel from the bars really stiff short 45 mil stem that just gives you all the steering transfer and accuracy that you want uh, to really bring out the best in this bike and Final contact point, you've got a Pivot branded uh, WTB saddle and that actually comes in a different design depending what size of bike you ride. So smaller bikes uh, get, a different get a different type of saddle. And then just flipping it around, you get a clearer view of this uh, belly armour here and you've got a stand, you know, you've got a bottle cage mount there. And then just under here, you've got another mount. You can lose it for Fox's live valve suspension actuation system, a fully electronic kind of intelligent suspension system, or you can just put a little uh, cargo box under there. Interestingly, although uh, Pivot normally work really, really closely with Shimano, there's no provision for a DI2 on this bike, which suggests that the next, uh, you know, electric shifting system from Shimano will almost certainly be wireless because uh, previous bikes have been DI2. And the other thing, uh, just to mention, this is the first switchblade and the first of the longer travel bikes that's had this vertical shock position in a Pivot. Uh, they introduced it on the Pivot Mac 4 SL and now it's uh, been moved across to this switchblade as well. And it just gives them that more, it changes the suspension kinematic so they can use it with a coil shock or it gives this, and it just means they can shrink the whole frame size down. So it's a more compact frame, but they can still fit a large size bottle on every frame size. And because the frames, smaller it just makes it lighter it makes it tighter it makes the whole bike kind of more compact and agile and that's a real take home on this bike so that's the tech talk round done like i say please watch the live ride video and thanks if you're a subscriber already if you're not sign up please click the notification so you know when the next video goes live and if you really like what i'm doing with the channel please consider joining these excellent folk who are my patreon subscribers who pay a small monthly fee to get uh, exclusive behind the scenes edit extended edits and early access stuff uh, that you won't see on normal youtube but thanks very much for watching anyway thanks to uh, raceface to Giro, to Camelback, to Endura, to O'Neill, to Gore, to Ride Concepts, and Crud, and 
Crank Brothers for kit I've used while testing. I'm Guy Kesteven, this has been Guy Kes TV, and I've been talking about Pivot's Switchblade Team XDR.